plants producing their own kind in this lesson reproduction in plants from seeds structure of a seed stages of germination seed dispersal reproduction from other parts requirements for a good crop crop protection and seed storage we all depend on nature for our survival our most basic need of food is supplied mostly by plants cereals pulses oil seed vegetables and fruits come from plants other useful things such as wood fiber rubber resins tea and coffee are also obtained from plants plants recycle carbon dioxide to give us life sustaining oxygen and reduce soil erosion and floods they help to bring rain and provide food and shelter to a great diversity of animals hence they are necessary for life to exist on earth more plants would mean a continuous supply of plant products to meet growing needs of humans we see a large number of plants everywhere around us we should grow plants and care for them because they are useful to us in many ways plants also reproduce and they produce new plants in different ways some plants reproduce from seeds while some through other body parts like roots stems leaves etc reproduction in plants from seeds most plants reproduce from seeds the process by which a seed produces a seedling is called germination germination occurs only when the seed receives enough air to breathe enough water to soften its seed coat and enough warmth sunshine to make its cells active structure of a seed a seed consists of three parts seed coat cotyledon and embryo seed coat seed coat is the outermost covering that protects the baby plant inside cotyledon inside the seed coat seed leaves or cotyledons are present the cotyledon stores food for the baby plant till it can make its own food some seeds like gram peas beans have two cotyledons and are called dicot seeds whereas some like maize and rice have only one cotyledon and are called monocot seeds embryo or baby plant inside the cotyledon is the baby plant which grows into a new plant activity soak a few kidney beans rajma or gram seeds overnight they will swell up and become soft after absorbing water now keep them on moist cotton wool in a bowl keep the bowl in sunlight sprinkle water on the cotton daily you will see that the seeds develop into seedlings stages of germination when a seed is sown it absorbs water from the soil it swells and the seed coat becomes soft the cells of the embryo start dividing and increase in size sunlight or warmth is needed for the cells to become active the embryo breaks the seed coat and comes out of the seed as seedling it gets its food in the beginning from the cotyledon and later from the soil when roots develop the root system and the shoot system develop the roots grow downwards and the shoot grows upwards towards sunlight slowly the seedling develops leaves and branches and grows into a new plant seed dispersal a plant produces many seeds but all seeds do not germinate some get destroyed by bad weather some are eaten by animals birds and insects some do not receive the ideal conditions for growth some seeds grow very close to each other and compete with each other for air water sunlight and nutrients many of them die and only a few survive that is why plants take the help of nature to scatter their seeds far away from their parent plant the process by which seeds are scattered away from the parent plant is called seed dispersal seed dispersal is carried out by wind water animals birds and bursting of fruits dispersal by wind this is the most common form of seed dispersal seeds of plants like cotton dandelion sycamore are very light and have wings or hair on them these seeds are therefore easily carried away by wind dispersal by water seeds of plants which grow in or near water are dispersed by water seeds of some plants like lotus have a spongy part seeds of some plants like coconut have a fibrous covering 
discovering helps them to float on water which carries them to different places. Dispersal by animals Human beings and animals eat fruits like mangoes, oranges, grapes, and throw away their seeds which grow into new plants. Some seeds have sticky hair, bristles, spikes or hooks on them. They stick to the fur of animals, feather of birds or to our clothes. And others carry it to other places. Sometimes, the seeds are passed out undigested through the droppings of birds and animals, e.g. seeds of cherries. They germinate into new plants. Dispersal by explosion Fruits of some plants like peas, beans, and poppy burst open after ripening and on becoming dry. Their seeds get scattered in all directions by the force of explosion. Dispersal by explosion Poppy seeds Peas Reproduction from other parts Some plants do not produce seeds. In such case, the new plants grow from certain other parts such as roots, stem or leaves of the parent plant. By stem Plants like rose, coleus, sugarcane, hibiscus and money plant grow from stem cuttings. Potato and ginger are underground stems. Potato has buds called eyes. Each eye can grow into a new plant. Activity 2 Take a piece of potato having eyes on its surface. Place it under the soil. Water it. After few days, you will see growth of a new potato plant. By roots Plants like sweet potato, carrot, turnip and dahlia grow from their roots. Activity 3 Cut the upper portion of a carrot and place it in a glass container. Fill the container with water so that half the carrot top is covered with water. Keep it in a sunny place. After a few days, a new plant will grow. By leaves. Some plants like bryophyllum reproduce from their leaves. The leaves have buds on their edges. Crops and agriculture. Crop is a cultivated plant grown on a large scale commercially, especially a cereal, fruit, or vegetable. The practice of growing crops on a large scale for food or other products is called agriculture. Agriculture is very important to feed the large population of a country, and forms the base of economy for a country like India. Requirements for a good crop Different crops grow in different types of soils. We must plant the right kind of seeds in the right kind of soil so that they germinate easily and quickly. Rice and jute grow best in clayey soil as it holds plenty of water. This is the reason why more rice is grown in West Bengal and Tamil Nadu, whereas jute is primarily grown in West Bengal's water-drained areas and riverine areas of Bangladesh. Wheat and gram on the other hand grow well in alluvial loamy soil of Punjab and Uttar Pradesh where irrigation facilities are plentiful. Jwar and Bajra need sandy loam soil to grow well, as is found in parts of Rajasthan and Gujarat. Cotton grows ideally in black soil, Regur, of central and western India. Moist, grainy soil of Assam, the Nilgiris and Darjeeling is best suited from growing tea where it is grown on slopes of hilly areas to avoid water logging around the roots. Coconut grows best in coastal sandy soil of Kerala and Goa, while amice needs the dry soil of the hills and plains of the north. Onion and groundnut are grown best in well-drained, sandy soil of Maharashtra and Gujarat. High-yielding variety of seeds should be used. The field should be properly irrigated at the right time with the right amount of water. Different crops grow in different seasons. Crops which are grown during the winter season, November to April, like wheat and gram are called rabi crops. Crops like rice, maize, jwar and bajra which are grown in summer, June to October, are called kharif crops. Vegetables like carrot, peas, cabbage, cauliflower, etc. grow in winter. Brinjal, tomato, gods onion, etc. grow best in the summer season.
we must add fertilizers and manures to the soil to improve the quality of the crops and increase their production. Chemical fertilizers like urea, ammonium sulfate, ammonium nitrate and superphosphate are added to the soil to increase its fertility. However, excessive use of chemical fertilizers can harm the crops and cause soil and water pollution. Biofertilizers like dung compost, bio-waste compost, and practices like vermiculture, earthworm breeding, are good for maintaining soil fertility without harming the environment. Crop Protection and Seed Storage Farmers must take proper steps to protect the crops, as they are prone to damage by pests, birds, animals and diseases. They must take the following steps. 1. The crop fields must be surrounded by proper fencing or barbed wires to prevent entry of stray. Grazing animals like cows, goats, etc. Though, there should be control spraying of pesticides and insecticides to protect them from harmful pests such as locusts, caterpillars, etc., and various plant diseases. Excessive use of these chemicals must be avoided as it could be very harmful for animals, birds, and humans. 3. The harvested crops should be stored properly in dry airtight containers, storage bins, and cold storages to protect them from moisture, rats, birds, squirrels, etc. Like other living things, plants also need care and attention. They grow well in favorable conditions. A bountiful crop strengthens the economy of a country, and provides food security to its people.